Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Tantanis channel. And recently I just bought a new 2024 Dunlop CX200 from the shelf and I heard that it's a great racket. And the spec on the paper seems to be very interesting because it's a thin beam control frame with a 90 square inches head size, 16 by 19 swing pattern. And the balance is 331.5 centimeters or 9 points head light. So it seems like to be something that I would love to play with. But long story short, it disappointed me a lot and I will play Devil's Advocate here and say that it's one of the worst racket made and you will find out why in this video so make sure that you like this video and subscribe to my channel. Okay, first of all, and this is probably the most important things. The swing weight on this new CX200 is extraordinarily low. Like I have never seen any rackets with such a number. At first, I thought it was a defect from manufacturing, but then I measured three more rackets and got almost the same number at around like 265 points swing weight unstrung. And I saw some reviews from fellow YouTubers uh, seems like they got low swing weight on these particular rackets as well at around like 270 points. So I believe that it's something wrong with the design. And why I think of it that way, if you have played with the racket with this kind of low swing weight, you will know that it's unplayable. It may not be serious on the power frame as much as on a thin beam control frame like this because on a parallel frame, for example, on a peel drive, uh, the power comes from the thick beam itself. But on this type of control racket, there is no power from the frame whatsoever. So the only way that you can generate power is from the plow. That is the result of the swing weight itself. So if the racket has an unstrung swing weight at this number, 260, 270, there is not much you can do about it the strong swing rate will be around like sub 300 which is even lower than a kid's racket that is why it is unplayable stock form at like adults level and customization is needed however because the racket is 305 gram and on my measurement as you can see it came quite uh, a little bit under at around 300 to 305 gram so there is a limit on what you can do with this racket without getting the weight up to like 340, 350 grams strong. But some people will say that, okay, it's a platform racket. Well, if it comes at something around like 290 gram unstrung, then yeah, that's a platform racket. For example, Costaf 97L or like uh, Gravity MP on the top of my head. Those are like lower than 300 gram unstrung. But swing weight on those rackets were like 280 to 290 points. So you can add like just a little bit of weight to beef up the swing weight for higher plow. But the rackets remain light. Or you can like replace the replacement grip to a leather grip. And you add like 10 gram. But uh, the static weight is still like very maneuverable. And some people say Dunlop give us a pro stock type of racket with this type of spec. Uh, on the pro stock rackets, uh, it mostly come with high swing rate but low static. So you can customize it to get the desired balance that you want. But you have that stability and you can hit like heavy ball with it while keeping the static weight relatively low. So in this case of CX200, I think it's a mistake in terms of design and manufacturing or the quality control. And this is the racket that I play in this video. I bought the highest swing rate one from the shop, which is 283 and strong swing rate. And I add around 3 gram of lead tape at 2 and 10 to beef up the swing rate and to solve the stability issue. And the final spec is 325 swing rate. And this is the closest that I can get to my spec. But the static weight is 332 gram strong, which is 5 gram over what I like. So this proved my point of if you get the 270 swing weight racket, there's no way on earth you can get to 
325 or 330 swing rate without adding 8 gram of lead tape to the hoop and it will mess up the balance of the racket as well that you will probably need to add the same amount to the handle or use leather grip and the static weight will exceed 340 gram for sure. The racket is strung with restring sink at 46 pounds on the main and 44 pounds on the cross. You can use my discount code TAN10 for 10% discount and I will put the link in the description below. First I play with its stock form to see what it is about and the feel of the racket is dampening. I tried my go-to string, this Lingo 2x Soft first, but I lost connection on the bow a bit, so I changed to Sync and it feels better. The racket is firm feel, but has some plush feel at contact. The uh, sweet spot is small and if you hit off just, just a tiny bit to wet the hoop, it is way stiffer than some of my clients found it jarring. I think the sweet spot is located exactly at the middle or a bit down. And the problem is the racket has no plow even at 315 swing weight strung. And it is extremely unstable, it bends and twists at contact all the time. And this makes it very hard to control. So I decided that customization is needed and I put 3 gram of lead tape to 3 and 9 to solve the stability problem. It feels better but still lack plow so I move it up to 2 and 10 and I think it's the best so far. This comes to the spec of 325 swing rate points as I show you before. It is better on the stock form, yes it absolutely is but is it good enough? I still don't think so. It still doesn't solve the stability issue completely. The racket still bend and twist at contact, especially when you swing fast or dealing with heavy wall from the opponent's side. I think it will need more lead tape and leather grip, but I don't want to add weight no more, so I keep it at this spec. The CX200 is under power. It gives exactly what you put in. This is normal for this type of frame, but I find the launch angle quite unpredictable. Like normally, it is not high, it's quite low, but on some shots, I get a launch response and get some flyers. I would say out of the 10 errors that I made, 6 goes to the net and 4 goes long. I think it's really hard to control the depth, like spin on this racket is below average. I think some people say that the racket is very spinny, but I completely disagree with that. Yes, it could be spinny if you play with its stock form at low swing rate because you get an extra racket head speed, right? But if you compare it apple to apple with the same swing rate to the other rackets to see how the frame itself can generate top spin, I don't think it's any better than the Blade 98 in terms of spin potential and access to spin. And the difference is that on the Blade 98, I can play with top spin while uh, the depth of the ball is consistent. But on this CX200, it falls short when playing with top spin, and it's a bit underpowered. And the ball sails when hitting with like less top spin. Hitting flat feels a bit better, but when you reach certain amount of racket head speed and power, the racket explodes the ball out. This could be good for some players, like some people may like it, but I don't really like this type of behavior because it's quite hard to predict. Compared to the Blade or the T-Fight or the Percept, those rackets can be more powerful in general, but the power progression is very linear, like you can anticipate where the ball will go exactly. And on the backhand, I feel not very confident to hit with full power because it can be launchy, it feels unstable with flat through the court style so I don't really know who this racket could be suitable for like because my top spin forehand feels a bit under power and hard to predict while hitting flat through the court could be launchy. The only thing that I like is the first service. I can get enough power and pace on the ball and the placement is pretty good. 
uh, the second serve is also totally fine but the serve is return and backhand slice went south uh, because the racket is unforgiving, unstable and lacks plow it's really hard to control and to like just block the ball back deep uh, to the opponent when return at the net as you can expect it's unstable and bouncy like the ball bounces off the string bed and goes pretty deep sometimes it goes long this could be good for some people but for me it's unintentional I didn't mean to do that okay in summary I don't like this racket at all and have no plan to play with it again by no means it gives me frustration in the match I cannot rely on it for putting away an easy ball or on the neutral rallies it doesn't give me confidence or consistency or any advantages at all. The racket is unstable and unforgiving and compared to the Blade 98, I don't see anything that this Dunlop CX200 is better, to be honest. The worst shot may be running forehand uh, trying to put it back cross court. On the Blade 98 and on the Perset 100D, I can do that really solid, but on this racket, almost impossible well I know some of you will say that just add more weight until it works but do it if you have to add like 20 gram it will enter the realm of heavy weight rackets and in that class there are so many rackets that are awesome you know just use the gravity pro or the pro staff 97 or X or the T5 315 instead or even better just buy a pro stock and customize it to what you like and I talked with a couple of racket testers in my hometown and I think it's a consensus call on this CX200 like no one likes it most of them play with it and decide to sell it off right away I will also sell it off soon I believe but for now it just looks pretty good and I want to keep it a little longer so yeah, thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Uh, tell me what you think in the comment below if you have tried this racket.